Welcome to the Professor Slots Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. John Friedel, but please call me John. I help slots enthusiasts improve their gambling performance with next level tactics and strategies. Want to accelerate your slots journey, be more profitable and understand casinos better to take advantage of them? I have over a decade of experience working with slots enthusiasts just like you, so you're in the right place. In case you missed it, on my last episode, I went over does using a player's club card make you lose and the Alaska gaming industry. I hope you enjoyed listening to my last episode as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Today's episode number 171 includes American Samoa gaming industry later in the episode, but I'll begin for you today with the number one thing you can do to win at slots more often. How you win at slots has changed. Have you noticed? I think you have, but do you know how to take advantage of these changes? For 130 years, slots were taken as random, but they never were. Yes, there's an element of randomness in how slot machines work, but what most people don't realize is that randomness varies. Thoroughly shuffle a new deck of cards. Is that random? Yes. But remove all the hearts from the deck beforehand, and is it still random? Your answer might be, yes. Wait, what? Throw a pair of dice onto a craps table. Is it random? Sure. But what about dice control experts throwing dice on those special table surfaces they love where the dice don't bounce nearly as much now before being banned in Las Vegas, but still at Foxwoods and now at Mohegan Sun? Your response might be, huh? They do that? And with slot machines, what about those? From their invention by Charles Fay in San Francisco in 1887, back when they were unpowered mechanical devices, they weren't truly random. Why not? because it wouldn't have been fun to play if nobody wins except for 3% of the time. The odds were improved from truly random, so players would win more often. And if they hadn't been, there wouldn't be a slots gaming industry today. For example, I looked up the last two years of Colorado return statistics for the three frontier towns of Blackhawk, Central City, and Cripple Creek. I wish I could show you the graph. You can effectively see the financial decisions being made by the casinos in those towns. That data shows that casinos control the returns differently, even while being under the same gaming regulations. But how does that help us win at slots? To see those returns, you'll need to look at them, which is impossible in a podcast. They are available in my Colorado Slots Return to Player article if you want to Google it. I wish I could show you the Colorado returns by slot machine denominations for the frontier towns of Blackhawk. If you could see them, you'd likely fantasize about how much money you would save just by avoiding penny slots in the town of Blackhawk, Colorado, or in any other state. My point is that critics say slots are random, therefore winning slot strategies don't exist. Yet here, we see informed choices matter. A fundamental concept in predictive statistics is that past behavior doesn't determine future results. But that's only for truly random behavior. Want to bet penny slots will still have the lowest denomination return in the years to come? Don't take that bet. It stayed the lowest for years already. And so we can use this to our advantage to profit at slots. Just keep doing what you're doing, but avoid penny slots. That small change in how you play will make your gameplay more profitable by avoiding machines with the lowest returns. For years and years, slots enthusiasts have had no good educational resources. We were all self-taught. We learned, perhaps without guidance or a teacher outside of a family member. Yes, some slot machine companies have had sales personnel attend gaming industry trade shows and talk about how their slot machines work. Listening to those talks is like reading the 8 to 10 pages of game rules on video slot machines. It's full of misunderstandings and ill-defined words designed to tell you what you already incorrectly think. But we are beginning to see better answers. I hope my work in educating players over the last 10 plus years has encouraged others. And some others are spreading misinformation to make money, sometimes a lot of money. That's unfortunate, but also part of the changing world in which we live. Not long ago, I saw a vice president of Ainsworth live streaming from Las Vegas. Did you see that? Some of the live questions were like, what are the odds? Oh, he said, the casino set those. Finally, a slot manufacturing executive came right out and said it. Yes, Nevada gaming regulations require that all slot machines have a theoretical payout lower limit of 75% for any wager, but there's no upper limit, and the average weekly return statistic in Las Vegas is 93%. If you've been to Nevada, you'll notice a far worse return on the weekends to fleece visitors and far higher during the week to keep locals happy, which in the end, as reported in the Nevada Gaming Commission, averages out around 93% per week. And this is how we learned in the past, seeing this for ourselves. Piece by piece, we had to get a picture together from what we'd seen with our own eyes. 
with which I now try to help you. Another poor assumption is that casinos will always make returns as low as legally possible, right? But those slots enthusiasts who have owned a business selling anything know better. The legal theoretical payout limit is 75%. The uninformed say, oh, of course, that's what greedy casinos would use. But that's not what happens. Why? Because that's no way to run a casino successfully. Yes, 30 U.S. states have a lower theoretical payout limit. So why would casinos ever set a single slot machine to have a theoretical payout limit over 100%? Well, casinos do that when they have a plan. My winning slot strategy, Highly Visible Locations, takes advantage of casinos with such a plan. They set up a slot machine, possibly new and famous, with higher odds of winning in a prominent location with a great view for passers-by. And what happens then? Do they lose money? On that machine set to win? Yes. But all the other machines in the area have been set to have lower odds than usual. So when passers-by get excited by seeing a win on the first machine, they spend their bankroll expecting to win on nearby machines. Do you see how that works? The casino wins far more from those many, many other slots enthusiasts playing nearby low-odds machines than casinos lose by paying out of several hand pays a few times. This manipulation is all very profitable for the casino, especially on busy nights with crowds of onlookers, and utterly legal if scheduled well in advance, if required by the state. Maybe you watch my free videos or listen to my free podcast episodes. Maybe you've seen or listened to all of them for years. Good for you. But that's not the same as taking a course which offers the convenience of a six-step process. With so many free videos, perhaps too many, organization not only helps but has become necessary. That's why I offer a course, as a convenience. The process my online slots course offers to win at slots is far more than my free videos as an unorganized collection. But if you've watched my free videos, you have perhaps heard of my winning slot strategies. I don't mind you trying them out without taking my course, but I worry that you haven't learned how to leave with your winnings as you would have if you'd taken the course. But that's on you. Winning at slots isn't about hand pays, it's about winning with the IRS, coming back and winning again and again consistently, and yes, getting out of the casino with your winnings. So what's the one thing you need to do to win at slots more often? Look up from your slot machine. Look around. Go for a walk if you can. Find the entrance and exits. Look at the slot machines near them. What's the widest aisle in the casino? When does it cross another wide aisle? And how are the slot machines situated at this intersection? In a word, the one thing you can do to win at slots more often is to observe your casino. How? Well, I'll tell you what I do. Have you been listening to my other podcast episodes on my casino trip reports? I walk into a casino, often a new-to-me casino, and I figure it out. Starting a couple of years ago, I reviewed Foxwoods, then Rivers Pittsburgh, and others during downtime on business trips across the country back before I was laid off as an aerospace engineer. But since the pandemic, I've been going a lot more often. I've been to Connecticut, Florida, Indiana, Kentucky, Michigan, Missouri, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. These articles and videos are worth reading and watching, even if you don't plan on going to those casinos in those states. Why? Because I explain how to look over a new-to-me casino and figure out how to win. And that's a skill you can learn from them. Not just what slot machines and winning strategies to try if you get there, but how to figure out what works at your casino. These casino trip reports are website articles, but also have embedded YouTube videos. Unfortunately, I just can't wander through the casino recording as I go. Some have done it, such as a student who became a competitor in the educational slot space. They say in the video, nobody has ever done this. That is undoubtedly true. My student was breaking three laws. That video is gone now, either because they listened to me and did the right thing, or YouTube did it for them. We've all had these growing pains. In my casino trip reviews, I recorded my car after spending two or three hours in the casino, figuring out how to win with a $300 bankroll. Except recording anywhere on casino property without explicit permission is not a good idea. During one casino trip review, a security vehicle started making its presence felt about halfway through my recording from the casino parking lot. So I stopped but finished recording when I got home that night. Everything turned out okay. Besides, the sun had set and it had become too dark to record. The security guard was probably just wondering about all the bright lights inside my car. In summary, participants in my online course have had amazing success with this approach. It's not one of my strategies, but rather all of them. Look around your casino. You'll be amazed by what you see. Improve your slots performance in 30 days or less with my 30 days to play slots smarter and win. You also get three free valuable bonuses, including one month free to my slots IQ membership group. New name. What do you think? Pretty slick, huh? 
It used to be called Slots Enthusiast Growth Network, which was a mouthful. But this is where you get community support and accountability. Visit ProfessorSlots.com slash 30 days to learn more about the free bonuses, course content, and awesome testimonials from participants. The price of the course is increasing in a few days at the end of July 2022. It will no longer be 40% off for an $80 savings as of midnight on Sunday, July 31st, 2022. If you've purchased the course, you're good to go thanks to your bonus for lifetime access. If you've been on the fence about purchasing it, now's the time. Act now. In the next segment of the show, I provide a brief overview of the current state of gambling in a U.S. state, territory, or the federal district, emphasizing the gaming industry for slots enthusiasts. Let's go over American Samoa's gaming industry. American Samoa slot machine casino gambling does not exist. Island residents enjoy bingo. The minimum legal gambling age in American Samoa does not exist because all gambling activity is illegal on this U.S. island territory. Legally, bingo is not gambling here and is a popular pastime of residents on the island. Next up is a usually short statement about slot machine private ownership, which I have included in case you live in this U.S. territory and are considering owning a slot machine. Here it is. The legality of private ownership of a slot machine on this island territory is unknown. As gambling is illegal, American Samoa has no gaming control commission. In this section, I'll discuss American Samoa gambling establishments. There are no land-based casinos on the islands of American Samoa. Bingo exists, especially in the capital city of Pago Pago. American Samoa's Pago Pago Cruise Port Terminal is a tourism stop for cruise ships from international destinations such as Sydney, Australia and Auckland, New Zealand. Tatua Hall, located on Pago Pago, the capital of American Samoa on the island of Tutulia, holds bingo games on Mondays through Saturdays each week. International cruise ships visiting the Pago Pago Cruise Terminal have onboard casinos available to passengers while cruising in international waters. There are no tribal casinos in the U.S. territory of American Samoa. As an alternative to enjoying American Samoa's gaming industry, consider exploring casino options in a nearby state or territory. Bordering American Samoa is, to the northeast, Hawaii. To the northwest, Guam and Northern Mariana Islands. To visit any of my articles on these U.S. states, simply visit ProfessorSlots.com, followed by its two-letter postal designation. For example, my Hawaii Slots articles available at ProfessorSlots.com slash H-I. American Samoa is located halfway between Hawaii and New Zealand in the South Pacific. Pago Pago International Airport, also known as Tofuna Airport, has weekly flights to and from Hawaii. Hawaii is located 2,600 miles to the northeast of American Samoa. The U.S. territories of Guam and the Northern Mariana Islands are 3,600 miles to the northwest. Otherwise, Samoa, formerly known as Western Samoa, is 50 miles northwest of American Samoa. It is a former colony of the British Empire with international flights options to the U.S., Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, and more. The independent nation of Samoa approved gambling and established a gaming control commission in 2010 with the Casino and Gambling Control Act. The Gambling Control Authority regulates gaming on Samoa, including a significant horse racing track on its capital of Apia. The principal notion for casino operations on Samoa is an operator running a junket-based business. Junkets are when an operator brings guests in from another location, houses them, and looks after their daily needs while they gamble. Provisions of Samoa's Act does not permit locals entry to the casino. Gamblers must hold either a foreign passport or be a registered guest at a resort or hotel. No theoretical payout limits or return statistics are available for the U.S. territory of American Samoa as gambling is illegal. In summary, American Samoa slot machine casino gambling does not exist. Bingo is popular among residents, but is not gambling according to the territorial government. Improve your slots performance in 30 days or less with my 30 days to play slots smarter and win. You also get three free valuable bonuses, including one month free to my slots IQ membership group, where you get community support and accountability. Visit ProfessorSlots.com slash 30 days to learn more about the free bonuses, course content, and testimonials from participants. The price of the course is increasing in a few days at the end of July 2022. It will no longer be 40% off for an $80 savings as of midnight on Sunday, July 31st. If you've purchased the course, you're good to go thanks to your bonus of four lifetime access. If you've been on the fence about purchasing it, now's the time. Act now. The next episode of the Professor Slots podcast will include another slots-related topic and a review of the slots industry in Arizona. 
For the first time ever, I am adding a bonus show to this episode number 172. It should be up next in your queue and is an hour long. It's the YouTube live stream audio for today's topic, plus about 45 minutes of Slots Q&A. For future episodes, I will offer these bonuses as possible. Enjoy! That's the end of another episode of the Professor Slots podcast. Thanks so much for listening. I plan to have the next episode come out very soon for you, where I'll have more amazing content for the show. Until the next episode, have fun, be safe, and make good choices. Bye.